This month, OpenAI released a new feature for ChatGPT Plus users, and it's called Code Interpreter. And what you can now do is upload data straight to ChatGPT. So here I've just selected the CSV file, which I can now input to ChatGPT, and then we can start to ask questions about it. And this new feature could potentially turn anyone with access into a data analyst or a data scientist even, but there's a catch. And in this video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know right now in order to get started with ChatGPT Code Interpreter. And then finally, I'm going to walk you through an example of how anyone can use Code Interpreter to do a complete data analysis project. We're going to look at visualization, analysis, and even some predictive modeling. And now don't worry if you don't have a technical background. Anyone can follow along with this. That's the nice thing about Code Interpreter. All you need is access to a ChatGPT Plus account and the web browser. Anything else is just basic prompt engineering and I will show you how to do that step by step. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, if you wanna follow along, if you wanna experiment with Code Interpreter, here's what you do. You go to ChatGPT like you normally would. Make sure you're on the plus plan and then go to the bottom left corner over here, click on your name and then go to settings. Then under beta features, make sure to select Code Interpreter. And what you can now do if you go to a new chat and you click on ChatGPT4 and then select the code interpreter over here. So this would be a default chat and here we can use code interpreter. And now we can see that we have the plus icon over here, which we can use to upload files. Okay, so now we can start using code interpreter. But what can you actually do with it? Let's first go over some examples. And I found this Twitter thread by Nathan Lance that does a very good job at detailing some of the cool things you can do. So here you can look at game development, creating a Flappy Bird game. Here is another game example, some more games. Here is data visualization for music. Here we can take an image and turn it into a video by animating it. And here is also someone that is using it to rewrite code. Very interesting one as well. Some visualizations on a map. Here's some more data analysis, some more charts. And then finally, here is one from OpenAI themselves where they show how you can use it to create a QR code. And you're probably thinking right now, okay, well, those are kind of a lot of things that, that it can do, but, but, but how and how do I know what it can do and how does it actually work? So let's cover that. So what Code Interpreter essentially is, it's an experimental chat GPT model that can use Python, the programming language, to analyze and manipulate data. And at the same time, it can also handle data uploads like we've seen and data downloads. So this is a really big thing, but under the hood, it is basically able to execute Python code. And now Python is a programming language that can do a lot of things. And that's really why we can use it for a variety of tasks, like we've seen from manipulating data to creating visualizations, to even creating animations and QR codes even. And now let's cover what kind of files you can upload to Code Interpreter. So you can upload text files, data files, Python scripts, image files, and binary files. And with all of these files, after uploading, we can ask ChatGPT to perform some kind of actions on the data, using the data. So for data files, we can do some kind of analysis, visualizations. For images, we can manipulate them by moving them or turning them into the GIF. That's really how you should think about it. And probably the best place to get started for most people is to start with data files. So these could be CSV files or Excel files. And now of course, make sure if you use company data or private data that you are allowed to actually provide it to ChatGPT. Really make sure you have a look at the privacy policies on how they handle your data. But for now, let's take a look at this data set. It's a customer shopping data set that was generated using Code Interpreter, which I will show you in a bit. But first of all, just show you how it works. So it's a CSV file. We have it in here and I can just let us say, explain this data set to me. So now we are going to upload the CSV file and now it's going to work. So this is a synthetic data set with a few columns. So how much time users spent on a website, what kind of items they looked at, add to carts, and then eventually if they made a purchase, yes or no. And now, like I've said, you should be able to use most common data types. So CSV, Excel, or JSON. And those are really like kind of like data types that you typically see within companies. So people are using Excel for basically everything to do little analysis, track sales, track metrics, whatever. And I think Code Interpreter could be a really interesting new way of analyzing data for people within a company that don't have a technical or data analysis background. So let's have a look at the initial results. So again, the query was explain this data set to me. And here you can see that for every column, it is now giving a description of what that column is about. And for time on site, it's saying presumably the amount of time the customer spent on the site or in the store during the shopping session. So presumably it's trying to interpret the data based on the context. 
that is nice and it's doing an accurate job at that looking at this data and now remember that everything going on behind the scenes is just execution of python code and the cool thing about code interpreter is that you not only get the results but also get the code on how it got to that answer so let me show you what it actually looks like and we can look at the show work over here and we can see what it's actually doing so it's using the pandas library to load in the csv and then print the head of the data frame and now the cool thing about code interpreter is that you don't have to look at this so for for non-technical people that don't know how to code you can just simply ignore this and just look at the results but if you want to learn how to actually do this and learn some python then you can look at those results and also this is of course a very good way to fact check the answers uh, that it's providing you with to really make sure that what it's doing is accurate but i really like how they make this distinction and hide the code by default so depending on the kind of user you are you can just look at the results or look at the results and the code but as of right now we only have descriptions of the columns not very interesting and probably something we could have figured out on our own but let's take it a step further and ask ChatGPT to visualize all of the columns so this is something if you had to do it in excel for example it's quite some configuration I have to set up the table select the data so let's see what it can come up with and look at this this looks pretty interesting so we have some visualizations and for some we have some bar plots but for some others we have a histogram which is already kind of like a more advanced plot showing the distribution of the data so depending and this is interesting depending on the kind of data it decides what would probably be the best visualization type and then if we scroll down we also have some additional information on the plus plus. and these figures could go straight into a presentation that you have to give on this month's sales numbers for example to your team but let's see how we can customize them a little bit more to align with your brand or company for example so let's provide a specific color code and in this case this is a shade of blue and say that we want to have the secondary color a lighter version of that so this could be your color company code and i've asked it to make the plus again so this is also really how you should think about working with code interpreter you really got to be creative like what, what can i do with it with the data what do i want to ask what kind of visualizations or, or figures do i want for either my reports presentations analysis whatever all right and there we go and now we have our plots in a very pretty shade of blue and again with some additional information but we've changed the color code and now this is cool what we can actually do over here we can see that it interprets the main color and the secondary color. And what we can now see for all coders out there is that we use the Seaborn library to create the plots. So we imported that. And then in the command to create the histogram, we just say color is main color. And here you can see that is how we reference that. So it's completely able to figure that out on its own based on a simple prompt saying, hey, this is my company color use that instead so this also shows how you really got to be creative when you're using code interpreter so since it's using python in the background and you can upload your own data the possibilities are are basically endless here but like what you can really use it for right now where i feel this can add a lot of value is either for learning purposes or for creating portfolio projects so let's cover a quick example of an experiment that we ran earlier to see what the capabilities are when it comes to doing a complete like data science project all from ChatGPT code interpreter so also generating the data so this is something that anyone can do and you can follow along basically with the prompts that i will show you over here so we started off by asking okay hey what, what can code interpreter do so it helped with that. And then here you can see the, the data files that it accepts. And here we asked it to create a custom data set. So here you can see the prompt. Can you generate a customer shopping data set that allows a simple model to perform well? And then it's going to create the features. And then we said like, hey, give it some reasonable column names. So we are really engineering a data set over here. And you can see how it's using Python to, to generate the data. So that is, I think, very cool for people that want to learn data analysis or or data science and don't have an idea where to start just just come up with an idea and ask it to create a data set and then what the cool thing is you can also ask uh chatgpt to provide it in a csv file to then download it and that is exactly what we did with the customer shopping data set that we were looking at initially and then you can just like go from there and with those column names update the data to reasonable values so we really it was first it was random and we say hey based on these these values update it and then we are going to perform some some data analysis and some data cleaning and you can really see okay how is this 
how is this going? What is this doing? And, and like I've said, I think for learning purposes, this is so great. Because when you're starting out with any like technical things with regards to coding, you have so many questions in the beginning and there's this initial bump that you have to go over. Like, how do you install Python or the programming language? What kind of like program or IDE do you need to install to run the code? How do you get the data into it? Like all of these questions that prevent most people from, from even like getting started. And I feel like Code Interpreter really like lowered the barrier to entry where you can literally start with with nothing just an idea and then create a complete data set based on some prompts or use your own data of course and then we ask it to provide some plots and do some exploratory data analysis uh, provided with some summary statistics and this is a shared uh, chat gpt chat so you don't see the outputs in here but we ask it to create like count plots so the the, the that kind of plots that we already saw and then some histograms and then finally, we also ran some modeling. So this is pretty cool. So here's the model performance overview. And now we really get into the more advanced stuff where we were asking. So first, we said like, hey, we performed, uh, we created the data set, we cleaned it, we did the visualizations. And then we said like, hey, let's try and create some predictive models over here that we can use to uh, use machine learning to create some kind of like model to create some kind of like predictions. And here you can really see how it set up a machine learning pipeline with some transformers, some models, and some hyperparameters, even setting up a, a grid search. And this is all pretty technical, but this is some pretty advanced like machine learning stuff. And now you could definitely already do something like this with ChatGPT. I even made videos on how to do a complete machine learning project, data science project using ChatGPT. But the fact that the model now has access to your data removes basically another step in like the human machine feedback loop where you first initially had to provide it with the data explain it in terms of like columns and rows because it could not read the csv so you have to copy paste it type it in but now it just has access to the data which ultimately will make the results the output code that uh, is provided to you in the visualizations just that much better so here we can see the example of how it was able to come up with the models, then also run the models and provide us with accuracy scores. So it actually understands the performance of each of the models. And we can use that to do another iteration. So for example, say like, hey, take the best model and tweak it even further. Or hey, I don't like these, these results. Try a completely different kind of model. And it just becomes more like interactive back and forth where you are really working with the model versus just like getting the output and then putting it into your own uh, IDE, for example, and running it manually. And now really what we're seeing with every update that OpenAI is, is putting out and is working on behind the scenes, we're, we're removing friction working with these models. So ultimately, we have to, as humans, give less and less and less information, less context to these models to still get the desired results that we're after and now this is of course just the tip of the iceberg there is so much more to come and the the function calling updates to the openai api and our code interpreter these are all like kind of steps toward making these models more autonomous and uh, giving them the ability to really perform actions on on our behalf and they're definitely not perfect yet so we also ran into some limitations where we try to perform a grid search which is usually a process that can take some time because it's going over a lot of parameters to try and figure out the best combination to use for the model but then it says hey i apologize for the delay the grid search performs uh is, is uh, computationally intensive and can take considerable amount of time so it basically cut off the operation here because it was taking too long and then suggested another approach to do a simpler version of it which is already quite interesting so it understands hey it's taking too long uh, OpenAI put some limits on that and then it says like here try this instead but despite these limitations we did manage to complete the entire data science project straight from code interpreter we started with data generation and then all the way to model performance and evaluation creating all the plots to compare the models and then here are some of our observations based on the experiments we run so far so as of right now, Code Interpreter can basically act as a very efficient junior data analyst. So it has access to Python and it can do all the basic things that you would expect a junior data analyst or junior Python dev to do. 
So that's something to keep in mind. It can suggest good actions to proceed with. It can also correct itself because it understands the context and the outputs. And we found that uh, GPT-4 works a lot better than 3.5. So since you have to be on the plus plan either way, if you want to experiment with it, go with GPT-4. And finally, of course, always make sure to really check the output. But this goes uh, without a saying, you have to do this with any like AI generated output that you use. Do your own due diligence, make sure to check the output because we ran into some uh, cases where it did uh, mess up some of the things and provided us with some errors. And so that is ChatGPT Code Interpreter. Everything that you need to know right now and how to get started. So like I've said, I feel like the best use case for this right now is experimentation, learning and creating portfolio projects because since it's all Python in, in, in the back end, I feel like it's more geared towards people that want to learn how to work with Python. Because while it's cool that you can use it to upload an image and then edit it uh, using Python, uh, it's still kind of like a workaround. You know, just go to Canva or use Photoshop to, to do that. I feel like the, the data upload and the code upload, that is really where it's at. Giving the model that additional context that was not possible with just ChatGPT, to make your workflow with AI even more efficient and really remove those friction points. So I really believe like right now, it's a cool tool for people that want to do quick data analysis but, but don't know how to do that. But I see it as more as a, as a tool right now for, for engineers and, and people in kind of like the technical field as an assistant or people that want to get there and use this as, as a learning tool. I feel like that's it's really its strong suit right now. But this really, again, like I've said, is another like step in the right direction where we can give these AI models also really the tools and the power to perform actions, to do things on our behalf versus just providing uh, language, just providing output in the, uh, in the form of text to us. So it's a great development. It really is cool to see how fast everything is going. I'm excited to see uh, where this will go and also what people and you guys can can do with this so that's it for this video make sure if you got some value out of this video to leave a like down below it really helps the channel so i would really appreciate that and of course stay subscribed so you don't miss any future videos i talk about artificial intelligence data science anything within that area so if you want to stay up to date on that like i've said make sure to subscribe and then i'll see you in the next one